Hey friends, welcome back for another What's for Dinner video. If you're new, my name is Courtney. I do these every single Sunday, plus some extra videos throughout the week and grocery hauls on Tuesday. If you are not already, make sure you smash that subscribe button, stick around and check out all of my content. All right guys, so as you know, we were out of town this week, but my oldest was home. I've got two meals that I cooked and left for him and two meals that I made for dinner. If you're looking for some delicious, easy home cooked meals, I've got you covered. So first we're starting off with a side dish. I've seen this all over the internet. I clicked on it one time on Pinterest and they were like, oh, you like it? So now it's gonna be everywhere you go. And it was, so I've got to make this. This is a whipped ricotta toast. I'm making the sweeter version. There are savory methods as well, um, but this is so good, so delicious. So I just took some ricotta cheese I bought at the store, added a little bit of olive oil and whipped it up with my immersion blender just to put air into it and make it light and fluffy and creamy. Then I toasted some ciabatta bread and we're just gonna smear the ricotta on top. Now to make it savory, you could add some herbs to the ricotta and you could rub a piece of garlic on that toasted ciabatta when it comes out of the oven and then put your ricotta on top and then drizzle with olive oil. But for our sweet method, we're just gonna do it like this and top it with honey. This was rich and decadent. It was simple, but the flavors complemented each other beautifully. It was fantastic. I can't wait to eat it again and I can't wait to try other methods. This was amazing. I did serve this alongside what I'm gonna show you next, which is spaghetti carbonara. I made this the week before and it was wonderful. It's a new method that I learned and um, I'm making it again because I wanted to film it. Last week that I made it, it didn't, I didn't have the right equipment, so it didn't film well. But this week I got the right stuff. So I'm starting off by cooking some pancetta. Uh, if you don't have that or you don't wanna pay for it, just get some bacon. It tastes almost exactly the same. Chop it up and cook it till it's brown and crispy and delicious. Save the fat and then save your bacon or pancetta in separate dishes. I'm making enough to serve three people, so keep that in mind. If you're serving more people, you'll need to double this recipe or triple it or whatever you need to do. I took four egg yolks, save the whites and make, you know, an omelet or something the next day, but just four egg yolks, pepper. I did about a teaspoon because it's supposed to be a very peppery dish. You can do more or less depending on your taste. And then I did about three quarters of a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. And then we're just going to take it and put it over uh, my boiling pasta water like a double boiler and we're going to whisk and this is going to melt the cheese It's going to pasteurize the eggs and it's going to make this nice and creamy and sauce like and that's what we're looking for So don't worry. We're not eating raw eggs. They're now cooked and pasteurized If you feel like your bowl is getting too hot and the eggs are starting to cook and stick to the side Be sure and lift it up and let it breathe for a minute before you you know put it back down But look how loose that sauce is now. It's beautiful all right, so then I just cooked my pasta like you always would, but I pulled it out before it was cooked all the way, a little short of al dente. And I went ahead and tossed it into that bowl with the egg mixture that I just showed you. And then I'm going to, as I do this method, I'm gonna be stopping and ladle in some pasta water, just one spoonful at a time. Our pasta water is very lightly salted. It's full of starch, so it's got some flavor to it, and it's gonna help make this a beautiful creamy sauce. So I put everything back on top of the boiling pasta water. Essentially, we've just made a double boiler here, and we just start turning the pasta around in that sauce. Right there, I added um, the leftover reserved fat from my pancetta. If it's bacon, add in some of that too, just like one tablespoon at a time. I didn't have a ton for my pancetta. So then as you saw, I ladled in some of that starchy pasta water and I'm just continuing to stir. That way the pasta is finishing cooking in this, it's absorbing the water, it's creating a thick, creamy, delicious sauce that coats each noodle. We don't need any butter, we don't need any oil, we don't need any cream. Everything we need is right here, it's super simple and it is so, so delicious. Just take the few extra minutes to cook it this way where you're turning it over that boiling pasta water. It gently cooks it and it turns out amazing. It's thick and creamy and delicious. And then I just tossed it or topped it with the pancetta. And as you can see, it did look like it had almost an Alfredo sauce on top. All right, on to the next meal. This is one of the meals that my oldest requested that I make for him to eat while we're gone. It is chili. So originally I was going to make this in my slow cooker, then I was using it for something at the time, so I'm having to make it on the stove top. Just know this recipe is interchangeable. You can make it in either place. It is a little easier in the slow cooker, um, and there is a lot more uh, labor right up front for the chili, but essentially both ways are pretty simple. So if you're gonna do it in the slow cooker, start off by browning your ground beef and draining it before you add it. Otherwise, everything else is mostly the same. You just add all your ingredients up front over there and cook it versus we're kind of stair-stepping it here. 
So I browned about a pound and a quarter of ground beef and I drained most of the fat, but not all of it. One, I mean, it's chili, there's fat and chili. Two, we're gonna use it to saute the onions and the garlic. So I have diced up one large onion and two cloves of garlic. Um, you could do whatever size dice you want. I like, as I've mentioned this before in a lot of things, I like texture. So I have a pretty rustic looking chili. There's a lot of chunks to it and that's just the way I make it because that's the way I like it. But if you guys like it a little smoother, a little less chunky, do a fine dice or you could even go so far as to grate your onion and garlic in and that's fine as well. Just use the large side of a box grater to grate your onion and use a small side or a microplane for your garlic and that removes all the chunkiness. I know some people don't like to bite into pieces of garlic or pieces of onion. So if that's what you like, just feel free to do it that way. You know, cook to the way you and your family like it. This is just kind of a guideline to show you how I make chili. You can kind of take it and run with it and make it your own. So back over at the stovetop, I went ahead and added my onion in with my ground beef. As you can see, I did leave a little bit of fat down there and we're going to cook the onion in that fat. This is a great time to go ahead and season your meat. Um, I'm using a pretty good handful of kosher salt and some fresh cracked black pepper right now. We'll add some more stuff later. Uh, just kind of season that to your taste. Really, I know some people like things more salty, some people like it less, totally up to you. Once the onions have had a minute to cook and soften, we're going to go ahead and add in our garlic and then we're going to start with our spices. I've got a, ta a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, two tablespoons of chili powder. It's chili, so we're going to add a lot of chili powder. And then we're going to go ahead and mix this around. This gives the spices a minute to kind of toast and that really elevates their flavor and it just does something extra. Next, I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of cocoa powder. I know it sounds strange, but go with me on this. It just kind of gives some depth and richness to this chili. You'll miss it if it's not there. And then again, we mix and we let it toast for just a few minutes. Now I'm adding in a tablespoon of that uh, garlic onion chili crunch stuff that we like, but you could add in say a minced jalapeno if you wanted or any other kind of chili pepper anything you really like to bring some heat to the game that just happens to be something we really really enjoy so i added in a big tablespoon all right so then i added in a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes you can use any kind of diced tomatoes you want but i prefer the fire roasted because i think it just fits with this better um, but just add it in liquid and everything and then I add it in a can of water however if you've got some beef broth on hand don't add in a can of water add in a can of beef broth I just don't have any so I'm adding in a can of water and in a minute I will add in some beef bouillon powder I also added in eight ounces of tomato sauce and then we're just going to stir this all together and then we're going to add in two tablespoons of brown sugar this just kind of counteracts the acid and the, the kind of metallic taste that you get from using canned tomato products sometimes um, and it just kind of makes it a little richer too but it doesn't make it sweet so don't worry then we're going to cook and reduce for about 45 minutes or so maybe a little longer as you can see i've reduced quite a bit and it's thickened a lot it's just the way we want it and then i live in texas we like frito pie so i always serve it with fritos but you can serve it with like cornbread or whatever you like to eat it with and of course if you like beans in your chili feel free to add in a can of whatever beans that you want we just prefer it without all right, who's ready for some pizza? We were totally ready for some pizza. So I made this roast beef pizza that I had mentioned the other day. It was really, really good. If you like, you know, roast beef sandwiches and stuff like that. So I started off by caramelizing some onions. That takes a while, so I just showed you the starting process. That is a head of roasted garlic, and I'm gonna add most of it in here. I did reserve just a little bit because I was making um, a different kind of pizza on the side. So I put a little over half of the roasted garlic in here and the rest of it went into making a traditional pizza sauce. And we're just going to add in some heavy whipping cream. In total, I'm gonna to add in about a cup. I started off small just so I could go ahead and start mashing up that roasted garlic and get it incorporated in the pan with that heavy cream. But like I said, we're eventually gonna add about a cup in total. And I am cooking this over a low heat because I don't wanna scald the, the cream or anything. I just wanna warm it through. We're making a sauce. This is gonna be a rich and creamy horseradish sauce. So to this, I'm also gonna go ahead and add in some horseradish. And you can go as heavy or as light as you want with that. I'm a big fan of horseradish. I mean, I really like it, so I added in quite a bit. But if you're not a huge fan, you might want to add in less. I also added in some salt and pepper, but I was pretty cautious with the salt just because um, roast beef is kind of salty and I'd added salt to the crust, so I wanted to keep this you know, 
I wanted to keep the flavor nice and not go overboard. But again, you can add in as much of that as you want. So I just let that all simmer on the stove top and then I rolled out my pizza dough. I did make it from scratch, I typically do. It doesn't take much time um, and it's just something I've done for as long as I can remember. So I just took, or I broke mine up into three different parts because I'm actually making three pizzas. I'm making this one, I'm making a regular pepperoni and I'm making a cheese pizza for my kids. So this was the third that I was gonna be using to make a roast beef pizza for my husband and myself to enjoy. So I just rolled it out as close to a circle as I can get. I am not good at rolling these out. Um, I try so hard, but I just am not good at rolling out circles. <laughs> anyway, that looked pretty circle-ish, so I decided it was time to add it to my pizza pan. I had already cooked my kids' pizza on this one, so I just added a little bit more cornmeal to the bottom. That just kind of helps keep it from sticking. And then I went ahead and added my crust on there, and we're gonna go ahead and start topping it. So I'm gonna add my sauce. I did go ahead and add those caramelized onions in the sauce, and I forgot to hit record, so I'm very sorry about that, but that was the only other thing I added was caramelized onions. Uh, I also added some of those to the pepperoni pizza too, because my son likes that. But anyway, just kind of smear that around. I did a thin layer because I mean, it is a strong sauce. It's roasted garlic, caramelized onions, and horseradish, so I didn't want it to be overwhelming but I made sure every bite was gonna have some. And then I like to season the edge of my crust with some garlic salt. I think it just tastes really, really nice. You don't have to, I just like to. And that is roast beef I had shaved at the deli counter at the store, but you could use any kind of roast beef. If you made roast the other day, it'd be a great way to use up your leftovers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and layer that on. I do wish that I would have torn mine in smaller pieces. I don't know why I didn't, um, but I should have. So if you're doing this at home, make your pieces smaller. Uh, you'll thank me later because it is a little bit easier to eat when you cook the roast beef it's it's not it doesn't always pull apart as well so smaller pieces would have been much wiser then I'm gonna add my cheese now I am using a Swiss cheese because typically when I go get like a roast beef sandwich it's got Swiss, Swiss cheese on it so I'm using Swiss but you could use whatever cheese you like if you don't like Swiss don't use it that's fine but I'm just gonna pop this in a 500 degree oven for like 10 ish minutes and maybe 12 depending on the size and that's it we've got pizza now that was mine it was the roast beef pizza and then i like i said i made my son pepperoni pizza and he likes to try new things he wanted to try hot honey on his pizza so i took equal parts of that chili garlic crunch and honey and i mixed them together and then i heated the honey mix up in the microwave just to make it like real liquidy and i don't know drizzleable is that even a word where I'm able to drizzle it. <laughs> um, anyway, then I took my slice of pizza and I drizzled the hot honey on top and my son raved about this. He raved about the hot honey. So I've never bought it because it's kind of expensive. It's like $10 at my store, but I can make it at home now and that's so simple. So if you like hot honey, there you go. That tasted amazing. All right, friends, I'm about to make my sausage and bean chili. I don't have an official name for this. I have been making this as long as I can remember. This was one of those meals when my husband and I first got together and we had like no money. <laughs> this was one of those meals I made because back in the day, you could get things like sausage and canned beans way, way cheap. I mean, I could get a pound of smoked sausage for like 99 cents. And sometimes on sale, I could get it cheaper than that. Uh, this time I'm using those Oscar Mayer little smoky hot dog looking things because my son, I'm making this for my oldest son. Um, we're heading out of town, but I'm making meals for him to eat while we're gone. They actually requested one of the ones that I made on a budget video, so I'm gonna kinda take some of the things he liked about it and mix it with my original recipe. So instead of using smoked sausage, which I normally use, I am using these, but if I were you, I would just use the smoked sausage because I think it tastes better. I also diced up one whole onion, but it was a smaller onion. If you've got like a massive onion, I would say just do like half the onion. I've got a couple of cloves of garlic. This time I just used the minced stuff from the fridge. You can go as light or as heavy as you want with the garlic. That is totally up to you. I'm gonna add in some fresh ground black pepper. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and toss in this can of beans. I'm using the Grillin' Beans by Bushes. Uh, this is the steakhouse recipe. A couple of companies do make a generic of these, but this is my personal preference. They kind of have a barbecue sauce flavor to them, but it's not quite as sweet as a can of barbecue sauce. So I really like the flavor that it brings. And a lot of times I will add in 
a second can of beans, whatever beans you choose, whatever you have on hand, you know, just whatever's convenient. Let's see, I don't have another can pulled out just because I'm making this for one person to eat over a couple of days. So I'm just gonna leave it at the one can today. Next, I'm gonna toss in a can of diced tomatoes. My personal preference is the fire roasted just because I think they add a little extra flavor. I'm gonna toss the whole can in. And then some tomato paste. You can put this in now, you can put this in towards the end. It's really up to you. Everything in here is cooked, so you don't have to, um, to cook it for very long in your slow cooker. You can cook it on low all day if you're gonna be gone, it won't hurt anything, or you can cook it on high for just a couple of hours, which is what I'm gonna do today, because I'm just making this so that he has it to eat while we're gone. And now I'm gonna go fill my tomato can up with water and add that in. All right, just pour that right on in. And then uh, the original recipe, if I remember correctly, did actually call for chicken broth, which I've always just used um, bouillon, but I'm gonna put in beef and I've been putting in beef the last couple of times just because I think that flavor profile goes a little better, but you could go either direction. If you have like vegetable bouillon and you'd like to use that, that would be fine too. Um, just totally up to you, whatever, whatever you wanna use is fine. Now we're gonna add in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I like to do a good solid two tablespoons, but really I'd say probably just do one because um, I just love this flavor. So I always add a little bit extra, but just for like a regular person, I'd say probably just one. And then I always add in about a tablespoon of soy sauce in place of salt. There's already a lot of sodium in here, but this kind of brings um, a bolder, richer flavor profile. And then about a tablespoon of chili powder. And then about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. If you don't have that, you can just throw in oregano or something like that, but I always have Italian seasoning on hand. And then we mix. And mix really, really well to break up that tomato paste. This already smells so good. I think this is kind of a cross between cowboy beans and chili, somewhere in the middle there. Um, it's, it's really, really good, really good. And it makes a lot of food. I mean, this is probably a solid six servings. We'll probably end up freezing some or um, my son will continue to eat it for lunches over the next few days after we get home. I don't know, but I mean, it makes a solid amount of food. And I just like to serve this over rice, but you could always serve it over cornbread or anything else really. But I'm just gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna cook this on high for like four hours and it'll be done. All right, this cooked for about three hours and I'm saying it's done. Um, as you can see, it's like super thick, thicker than a stew, uh, pretty close to like a chili, but you can see everything in there. There's beans in there, there's tomatoes in there, the sausage is in there, those fire roasted tomatoes are in there. It smells incredible, so delicious. And I do have uh, rice cooking on the stove. So I will get to show you what this looks like. Um, we're leaving like super early in the morning. So we're just having sandwiches for dinner and my son asked if I would just go ahead and make him a bowl of this for when he gets home from work late tonight. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I will have a bowl for him and I'll take a picture of that later. So you guys can see what it looks like. Um, I always think it's it's actually kind of pretty for what it is, you know, <laughs> just uh, like a sausage chili. I think it looks pretty. It's got a lot of color to it. But anyway, this is a family favorite. I've been making this for, I don't even know, like forever. Um, I mean, it's not as cheap as it used to be, but it's still pretty economical. And if you watch my uh, my budget, my last budget video, I think it was, I'll try to link it down below in the description box or on the end of this video, one or the other, but I made it uh, without using the bushes beans. So it was even cheaper, but it's still not that expensive to make considering this is a huge pot of it. I mean, this is, I said six servings, but I'm gonna say eight at least. It's a lot. So there you go. Here is dinner. All right, friends, there you have it. Those were our meals for the week. They were so delicious. Again, everything is listed down below in the description box if you would like to try these recipes. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you tried them. Also, if you have recipes you think I would like, send them to me. My email is listed down below, and you could always hit me up over on Instagram. All right, guys, have a fantastic week, and I will see you soon. Bye.